used to think that both sustainability and justice were kind of like these very solid mountains, you know, that we were all trying to get to. And um, while I've been here at Homeless Garden Project, I've learned that justice is a process. And all of us have within us the power, the resources, and I think also the calling to shape our community into a just, sustainable, and whole community. And with that, I am so honored to introduce Catherine Sneed, our speaker tonight, who has made a life's work of this. I'm glad that Derry said that it's something about calling, because I think that's why I'm here, is because I think I was called. And fortunately, I heard the call when it, was, when it went out. Um, and, <clears throat> and I hear it every day. I hear the call every day, and I feel it all day. And that's what keeps me going. And I think that's what keeps us all going. And whether or not we know that we're getting the call, because most of us are too busy with our lives, it's hard to know that the call has gone out. But what I have learned is, is that gardens help, to help us to hear that call. And, and I, I am pleased to say that creating spaces like this one is a way to answer that call. Many years ago, in 1982, when I was told that I would not live past Christmas, let's see, I think it was uh, June, and, um, <clears throat> and I, as I prepared for when I was 25, which is an interesting thing, to prepare to die um, with my four-year-old girl, say, you know, doing her four-year-old girl thing, I'm like, I'm not dying. I'm, I'm not ready to die. And fortunately, again, that call went out. And the call was that you can create a garden, Catherine. And that's what I did. But also in creating the garden, another call went out. And it was a call to someone who came to California as a homeless person, me. I was 17. I was pregnant with my son. And I wanted to come here because I knew that Newark, New Jersey had nothing to offer my son. <laughs> Having come here as a homeless teenager to California was another call that I heard. I grew up, my father was in the army. I was born in Germany. I have 10 brothers and sisters. We went all over the world with our father. And one of the things that our father did because he, um, was stuck with 10 kids because our mother died when we were very young. He made us garden. And that was how he kept us from doing bad things, he thought. Our sheriff, um, who is a good friend, came to say goodbye to me at the hospital, as so many people did, um, with tears in their eyes and very upset. And I was like, this is no fun. And, but they kept on coming and they kept saying, oh, we wish you well. And I'm like, well, I wish me well, too. <laughs> but it wasn't until Michael Hennessy's uh, chief of staff gave me the Grapes of Wrath, and I read it because I was busy hitchhiking here, and I didn't read much in high school because I did everything else in high school. Um, and reading the Grapes of Wrath made me believe that this story was about connecting with land. My boss, Michael Hennessy, who was the sheriff, who, who allowed me to continue working, he thought it was more likely the morphine that they gave me in the hospital and not the grapes of wrath. Um, and maybe it was both. But what I know is, is that when he said that I could bring the prisoners out, I said, well, you know, I'm coming back to work tomorrow and I'm coming and we're going out with the prisoners. And so the prisoners carried me from the jail to the farm for two years because I couldn't walk. And for two years, the deputies would, when we went out, would say, are they going to kill her today? Will they kill her and rape her? Or what's going to happen out there? <laughs> they didn't know what work was. And so in the two years that before I went into remission, I said, we got to do this, we got to do that, we got to do a lot of stuff. 
And every day they were down and they were there ready to go. As we started to actually grow things in this garden and produce stuff like broccoli, and the deputies began to say, wait a minute, they're actually doing something constructive here. And they would say to them, you're doing something constructive. Gee, you don't have to throw your life away being a drug addict. That call went out, doing something constructive, doing something meaningful. And so when people said, well, what are you going to do with the produce? I felt that it was very important that the people who felt that they had no value were able to give what they created. We gave it to Project Open Hand, a program that helps people that had, that were HIV positive, but now they also help people who have cancer. We gave it to, f to soup kitchens, to pantries, to anybody. Um, I will never forget seeing seniors, a group of senior women. I think the oldest was about 86 in Hunters Point, which is one of San Francisco's poorest neighborhoods. These seniors, at 7 o'clock in the morning, we were there. I was there with a group of ex-offenders that we were working with. We were clearing the brush there. And these senior women were digging in the garbage can, getting cans. And I said, what are you doing? And they said, we're getting cans. I was like, well, I can see that, but why are you getting cans at 7 o'clock in the morning in this neighborhood where, oops, you might, something might happen to you? And they said, because this is how we get our food. We're able to buy vegetables this way. And I said, you know, we are growing vegetables. We'll bring you vegetables. And that's what we've done. We have gone from growing 35 tons of vegetables to now growing 70 tons of vegetables that we give away. I think I was called to come to Santa Cruz because when I went into remission and I realized that I really didn't know anything about gardening or farming, that I needed to learn something. And I had gotten accepted to Emerson College in England because they thought I was gonna to die too, and I didn't. Um, and, but my son wrote to me and said, Mom, I really miss you. We want you to come home. And so I did. But before I came home, I called the UC Farm and Garden and asked Lynn, who was the farm manager, or no, the apprentice coordinator, is Lynn here? Okay, now I might cry. Um, and Lynn said, yes, you can come to the farm and garden and, and we'll help you to keep this program going. Well, Lynn and Jim Nelson, who's here, and Orrin Martin did more than that. Again, the calling. What they did was they said, Catherine, you have a good idea. And if you need our help, we will share what we know with you and you can do it. And them saying that I can do it, again, helped me to know that that's what we needed. We needed to be able to say to people, you can do it. And so I've spent 35 years saying to prisoners, ex-offenders, now young people, 18 to 24, teenagers, 13 to 17, you can do it. And we can do it together by working. And what I have discovered is that what is missing is the love of work that our parents had. The love and the appreciation for people who work, for people who have the dirty hands, for people who get it done, for people who make sure that we can continue. We have, have lost that. And I think that this is an expression of how important it is that we let people know that with work comes love, with work comes change. With work comes our future. That's what it is. And so this summer when I had 441 teenagers and at the end of the summer and the girl said, you know, we want to thank you, Miss Catherine. We want to thank you because you let us do the work. Well, I did let them do the work. <laughs> I am hopeful that we can expand what we are doing, that we next summer that I will have a thousand teenagers working with me, keeping San Francisco green. We have a contract with our public utilities company. The kids get $12.50 an hour during the summer. Our older folks get $13.50 an hour. Our, the kids that are in college 
are able to be in college because every year they know they have a job in the summer. Our high school kids are paying with their $2,500 for the summer that they made. Most of them paid the rent for their family. Most of them bought their own school clothes, bought their brothers and sisters school clothes, bought food for their families. During the school year when they're making $200 a month working with us two Saturdays, they're buying food for their families. And so when people say, oh, the gardens are just it's a groovy place to be, it is a groovy place to be. <laughs> I agree. But it's also an important place to learn to live. And that's what I've tried to do with my life. And so, I, again, I appreciate you all being here. I appreciate you understanding. that together we can, and we do.